the day that the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Amen? Amen. Our scripture today is coming from the book of Romans, the third chapter, beginning with the 20th verse, and we will read through 28. Let us hear a word of the Lord. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law of the prophets. And even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation from through faith in his blood, to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through for the forbearance of God, to declare, I say at this time, his righteousness, that we might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Where is boasting then? It is excluded by the law. But by the law of faith, therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. 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 This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine. Thank you everyone for participating in the devotion at this time we'll have prayer given by deacon Fleming. amen heavenly father we come to you this day dear lord thanking you for this day Father, we thank you for allowing us to gather together in your house of prayer one more time. And now, Father, we ask that you come before us today. Let your Holy Spirit, dear Lord, overflow in your house today. Prepare our hearts and our minds, dear Lord, to receive your word so the Lord we can be doers of the word and not hearers only. Our Father, we thank you and we praise you for all of your goodness. And it's in Jesus' name we pray it all. Amen.
been good. Think about where you were this time last year. He's been good. Think about it. Think about the good. When I think about the goodness of God and all that he is, oh, my soul cries out, hallelujah. Thank God for raising me. You may be seated. Twenty-four. I know we should be solemn, but again, when I think about what the Lord has done for me, I may be sad, but I am joyful in knowing that he woke me up this morning. That's no small task. He woke me up this morning. I was clothed in my right mind and at the end of the day we come to the house of the Lord we welcome tabernacle to this house we welcome Hartford to this house we welcome those on the internet from the four corners of the world to this house as we solemnly go into our Ash Wednesday service. There's a call to worship. In unison, may we recite it. It comes from Joel, so it's scripture. Thank you. I don't have to say it. It's scripture. Joel, the second chapter, 12th through the 18th verse. Let's read this in unison. Therefore also now, saith the Lord, 
turn ye even to me with all your heart, and with fasting, and with weeping, and with mourning, and rend your heart, and not your garments, and turn unto the Lord your God. For he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness, and repenteth him of the evil. Who knoweth if turn and leaving a blessing on him, even a meat offering and a drink offering unto the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children, and those that suck the breast. Let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber, and the bride out of her closet. Let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep between the porch and the altar, and let them say, Spare thy people, O Lord, and give not thine heritage to reproach, that the heathen should rule over them, Wherefore should they say, Where is their God? Then will the Lord be jealous for the land and pity his people. Amen. We will have a hymn of ascent. Jesus paid it all. Didn't he? Didn't he? Let's remain standing as we sing Jesus paid it all. repeat let us say in unison the prayer infinite God of all mercies 
source of all comfort, we confess to you that we have sinned by our own fault in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Lord, have mercy upon us. According to thy loving kindness, accept our repentance for the wrongs are done, for our blindness to human need and suffering and in, to injustice and cruelty. According to the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out our transgressions. Wash us thoroughly in our iniquity and cleanse us of our sins. Accomplish in us the work of your salvation that we may show forth your glory in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. And let us now repeat the Lord's Prayer in unison. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. You may be seated. We are blessed today to have in this house the congregation from Tabernacle Missionary Baptist Church. Amen, amen. And your leader, the Reverend Dr. Nathan Johnson. Amen. At this time, we will be blessed by a musical selection coming from the choir from Tabernacle. Hear ye then.
fount lose all their guilt and stain. Amen, amen. Old Testament reading by Reverend Frasella Jenkins, followed by New Testament reading from Reverend Lurisi Stokes. God bless you all. Old Testament reading, Isaiah 58, 1 through 12. New Revised Standard Version. Shout out, do not hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Announce to my people their rebellion, to the house of Jacob their sins. Yet day after day they seek me and delight to know my ways, as if they were a nation that practiced righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They ask of me righteous judgments. They delight to draw near to God. Why do we fast, but you do not see? Why humble ourselves, but you do not notice? Look, you serve your own interests on your fast day and oppress all your workers. Look, you fast only to quarrel and to fight and to strike with a wicked fist. Such fasting as you do today will not make your voice heard on high. Is such the fast that I choose a day to humble oneself? Is it to bow down the head like a bulrush and to lie in sackcloth and ashes? Will you call this a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I choose to loose the bonds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house? when you see the naked, to cover them and not to hide yourself from your own kin, then your light shall break forth like the dawn and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help, and he will say, here I am. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointed of the finger, the speaking of the evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs to parch places and make your bones strong and you shall be like a water garden, like a spring of water whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall rise up, you shall raise up the foundations of many generations you shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to live in. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. 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 Bless you. Amen. Our New Testament. Scripture is Matthew chapter 6, verses 1 through 6, and 16 through 17. Beware of practicing your righteousness before others in order to be seen by them, for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give arms, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogue and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, you have received your reward. But when you give alms, 
do not let your hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father, who sees in secret, will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret. Your father who sees in secret will reward you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 16 and 17. Yes, further down. And whenever you look, whenever you fast, do not look somber like the hypocrites, for they mark their faces to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face. Now, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Bad. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. I, I, I'll call for the ushers and to come forward as well as the trustees. And I wanted to begin the offering with a generous gift from Tabernacle Missionary Baptist Church. Amen. Now, this is what it's all about from the standpoint of congregations being supportive of one another. This is never required, this is never even expected. But I thank the Lord for the generous spirit of uh, churches that want to be a blessing to one another. If Tabernacle succeeds, the kingdom of God succeeds. If Hartford succeeds, the kingdom of God succeeds. If Hartford succeeds, Tabernacle succeeds. If Tabernacle succeeds, Hartford succeeds. If we're really trying to make a difference in the world. And let us take this spirit, this generous spirit, into our offering today. Amen. Let's thank, bless you.
let us pray. Let us pray. All I have to do is live right and believe in what you say. Gracious God, we thank you for this opportunity to give. Give because you've given us so much that we feel that it is right, that it is good, that we give back a portion of what you've given us. We can't pay you for what you've done, but we can pass it on. Thank you for this ability. Bless the offerings that were given, that they may be used in your kingdom building. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. It brings me great joy to bring to the pulpit at this time the senior pastor of Tabernacle Missionary Baptist Church, the Reverend Dr. Nathan Johnson. And he is a man of God. And he is sincere. And I do appreciate sincerity. I need sincerity in my life. And this man loves God and he loves people. And he is a wonderful servant, not only to Tabernacle, but to the whole city. And when my father passed, Dr. Johnson stayed on the phone, checking on me throughout that whole period. And I really saw another side of him, uh, the, the side that you appreciate and enjoy in a pastor who is really a pastor. And uh, I, I thank God for him. As far as this great and grand tradition, uh, let me tell you something, it goes way back, right? And uh, I, I remember those January services. We just kind of shifted it a little bit, right? We had enough snow where we said, let's do it when it's just a bit milder, just a bit, and uh, so that we wouldn't get snowed out, you know. But uh, I thank the Lord that every time this brother blesses that microphone, he never preaches a bad sermon. Now, I've said that before, so I'm going to take it even further. Every sermon, it seems like he takes us higher and higher. Every rung goes higher and higher. There's deeper depths, and there's wider seas to be explored in his preaching. And I'm just so glad that we have been a part of the spiritual journey and matured, maturing of not only a congregation, but of a city, of a state, of a region, of a country, that has been blessed by his ministry. After this choir, or after we sung a hymn, uh, an important hymn to me because it was one of PA's favorites, and uh, we have a lot of memorabilia still up uh, because it's Black History Month, and we ought to thank God for the heroes and the sheroes that brought us over. And I just, and this is one of his favorite hymns one of his favorite hymns uh, and we thank God for people know how to sing it, sing it well. So after we've heard, sung this hymn we will hear no other voice but his thank you to this intergenerational spirit filled choir. Somebody say amen. Amen. Let us prepare to hear from anybody need a word tonight. Let me tell you, in the times that we are living in right now, children still killing children, wars, alarms everywhere, suffering and, and sorrow throughout the world. We need a word tonight. We need Ash Wednesday. This isn't tradition this, solely. This isn't for form or fashion. This is something that we need. And we pray to receive it through the ministry of Dr. Johnson. God bless you.
You may be seated. Let me first thank God for the undeserved privilege to be in the house of the Lord on this this Ash Wednesday evening. And let me thank my friend and my brother, the esteemed and beloved pastor of this church, Pastor Charles Christian Adams. And, um, I, um, I've treated him uh, like a little brother. He's a day or two younger than I am. <laughs> um, but uh, I love you, Brian, and I'm praying for you, and I'm with you, amen, as you continue to make the journey as pastor of this church, amen. <laughs> to the Harford family, thank you for being so gracious to receive us again. Um, I want to thank Tabernacle for being here. Yes. I, I just, um, uh, just wave your hand, Tabernacle. I, I think I can see you. Amen. Wave your hand. Amen. Um, the relationship between these two churches. Um, is more than historical. There is a theological significance between our relationship. As I listen to the reading of the scripture, not many churches, and Tabernacle knows that we do that, read scripture. You, you, you are amazed because you do that, but there are a lot of churches where very little, if any, scripture is read. And certainly not a full passage as you've read tonight. I think that's to be praised and appreciated. I want to thank the Women and Girls Ensemble for singing tonight. Thank you so much. And uh, officers are here. I, you know, you raise your hand, but I see the officers. I see our chair and vice chair, and I see officers scattered and trustees. And just know that uh, pastor's glad to see you. Amen. Sister Teresa Youngblood serves as director of our uh, women's ensemble, uh, uh, um, aided by the able ability of directing by Sister Lavera Young. Amen. And we have with us tonight a, a, a young man, uh, Brother John Campbell, who is assisting us on the instrument tonight. There's a song that the Lord put in my spirit. Be flat.
closer drawn to thee consecrate me now for thy service Lord by the power of grace divine let my soul look up with a steadfast hope and my will be lost in thy cross where thou hast died draw me near the Lord, Lord near a blessing Lord Precious bleeding, bleeding side, draw, draw me, draw me near, draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross. Lord, to thy precious, to thy precious, to thy precious, Ask, oh God, that you would speak to us in these moments. We thank you for uh, this blessed privilege. Now, Lord, you've granted me the opportunity to be the vessel for this moment, and I ask that you would focus my mind, frame my thoughts, and fix my words. So that what happens in these moments, first and foremost, would be pleasing to you. And then I pray, O oh God, that you would see fit to use these words for the edification of all who would hear. Thank you for your presence among us. We ask that you continue to have your way, move as you will. Cover me afresh with your grace and your mercy so that none of my shortcomings, deficiencies, faults, failures, nor impediments will get in the way of what it is you desire to do here tonight. In the wonderful, perfect, and matchless name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. 
Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> Everything we do is a matter of choice. Everything. Nothing just happens. The activation of our volition yields the consequence to where we find ourselves in life. In fact, this matter of choice even impacts our spiritual lives. For if the truth is told, we are where we are spiritually by choice. There is a text that the Lord has burdened my heart with, and it's a familiar text to most of us. Paul is the writer, and he writes it to this church at Rome, but it's a circle, circular letter. For it was passed around to the other churches. And after Paul has labored to declare and to delineate and to discuss the core doctrines of the faith from chapter 1 through verse through chapter 9 and he takes a parenthetical moment in, in the latter portion of 10 and 11 and talks about Israel but he gets to the place where the rubber meets the road. For he says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice holy and acceptable yes, unto God, which is your reasonable service. Yes, and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good, acceptable, perfect will of God? The choice is yours. The choice is yours. We, we oftentimes like to find excuses and rationalizations and justifications for why we aren't what we really can be in the Lord. But in this Lent, Lenten season, we might need to be reminded that the choice is ours. When I look at the text, I see, I see five choices that I want to rush and move expeditiously through as the Holy Spirit would guide us. There is the choice of motivation. There's the choice of presentation. The choice of conformation. The choice of transformation. And lastly, the choice of verification. 
Just pray with me for just a minute. I, I'll be out your way as I seek to deliver my little Easter speech right now. And for there must be some choosing because when, when Paul says, I, I beseech you, I implore you, I beg you, and can I say this parenthetically? That begging is what preachers do. We don't order. We don't command. We beg. I am an ordained beggar. Paul says, I urge you, and then we get to that word, therefore. Therefore, in view of the fact, I wish I had some Bible students here. He talks about, first, the choice of motivation. We choose what we are motivated by. We choose what we are moved by. We choose what we are driven by, what we are stirred by. Oh, yes, we do. Amen. We, we, we choose that. We choose. Some of us, some of us, have, we've chosen uh, to be moved by the messages around us. Amen. You let a commercial come on, and if it says you need to buy, Amen. A size 10 and you're a size 20, you go try the size 10. We'll move by the messages around us. Hello, somebody. Amen. Talk to me. Amen. Talk to me. Amen. And, 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 and a lot of us don't want to admit it, but we do what we do because we heard it from somewhere. We're moved by the messages around us. Some of us are moved by the mistakes of our past. We don't give of ourselves as we should because we are shackled with the mistakes of our past. And it's interesting to, to note that some of us have no issue accepting the forgiveness of God, but we question it so much so that we don't forgive ourselves. Some of us are moved not only by the messages around us and not just by the mistakes, but by the misfortunes we have experienced. I've never seen so many folk who love to wear the garment of being a victim. We love to claim how hard it's been. Listen, listen, listen. Amen. Hold up your head and turn that frown upside down because you ain't the only one. Hello, somebody. And in Christ, we are not victims. We are victors. Some of us are moved by our own musings the things we ponder in our minds, so much so that we suffer from a God attention and deficit disorder. But the text, the text says that we ought to be motivated by his mercies. Oh, y'all, maybe over here. Motivated by his mercies. It's in the text. It says, I, I, I urge you, I implore you, I beg you, I beseech you, therefore, by the mercies of God. I wish I had a witness here. By the pitying of God, by the compassions of God. Y'all ain't talking to me here, but do I have anybody here who is unashamedly a recipient of God's mercy? And, and what I like about it, Pastor, is that 
It says mercies. Some folk may have mercy, but they aren't too, too ready to extend mercies. Uh, now listen, y'all got to forgive me, but I, I shout on simple truth, and I shout on the simple truth that God, the, of the plurality of God's mercy. Amen. I, I, I said the plurality of it. Let me tell you theologically what Paul was talking about. He was talking, number one, uh, about the mercy of propitiation. What is that? It's the mercy that God knew we couldn't pay the debt, so he allowed Jesus to die in our place. I heard you sing something earlier about he paid it all. Here's a shout right here. You ought to thank God for the mercy of propitiation. Lord, help me. Not only the mercy of propitiation, but the mercy of justification. Years ago, when I studied the doctrine of justification, I needed to study it because I was trying to gain my self-worth from other folks' opinions of me. But when I realized that being justified, God has declared me right with him. And he didn't need a committee. He didn't need a vote. He didn't need anybody's reference. I need somebody who, because you trust Jesus, God said, you all right with me. And listen, stop letting folk play God in your life. God has declared you right with him. Not only propitiation and justification, but the mercy of sanctification. He made us fit to be used by him. Now listen, y'all. A lot of us like to determine who we go listen to, who we go be bothered with by a resume. And don't you know resumes can be redacted? preach pastor don't you know resumes can be a bridge y'all don't want to talk to me here but and, and, and folk want to qualify you but God has cleaned you up made you fit to be used by him you don't oh, y'all ain't helping me here anybody sanctified in here I don't mean sanctimonious I said sanctified that God has washed you wait a minute you think I'm talking about some kind of detergent what can wash Wash away my sins. <laughs> Nothing but the blood of Jesus. But then the last mercy I see as I rush on is the, is the mercy of glorification. Now this blesses me. It, it means that God sees me right now as I will be, not as I am. Y'all ain't helping me. <laughs> Tabernacle will tell you that one of my favorite benedictions is, is taken out of Jude where it says, Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling. Now hold your, hold your mule right here and present you faultless. <laughs> Wait a minute. Can you imagine a faultless you? I, no, I ain't talking about your neighbor. I'm talking about you. How many of you know some stuff about you that if you were God, you wouldn't let you in? But when God gets through with you, he will present you faultless. <laughs> motivation, motivation. But then there is the choice of presentation. Presentation, presentation. Uh, he says that you would present your bodies. Now you see, the reason why the choice of motivation is so important is that you, pre you present yourself to what motivates you. If you're motivated by something other than the mercies of God, that's going to be where you present your bodies. That word present, brother and sister preachers, means to, to put at one's disposal. 
Y'all ain't talking to me here. And, and, and a lot of us don't have a problem putting ourselves at disposal, but it ain't always for God. Preach by yourself, Pastor. Amen. It's for everything else but God. Tell your neighbor, he, you know he's right. Amen. You, amen. A, amen. But, but he says to God, because of the mercies, you ought to present, put yourself at God's disposal. And it's just good sense to do so. Good sense is your reasonable service, your reasonable worship. You know, what would happen in our churches if Sunday morning, if everybody came in there giving themselves totally, placing themselves totally, completely, unreservedly at the disposal of God? Y'all ain't hearing me. Because somebody right here, right now, you saving an amen. I don't know what you're saving it for. Hello. Amen. Somebody here right now say, well, you know, I want to say something, but I don't want folk to look at me. No, I don't care who's looking at me because they didn't wake me up. They didn't save me. They didn't help me. God did, and he deserves my all to him. The choice of conformation, conformation. And be not conformed to this world. One writer says, I believe it's Phillips, who says, don't let the world squeeze you into its form. I think Eugene Peterson says, don't become so comfortable with the world around you and fitting in that you don't even think twice about it. Now, I expected you to be quiet, I know, because the modern church is a church of a simulation. I'm gonna say it again. I said the modern church has become many times, in many instances, a church of a simulation. Amen. Instead of being a church of distinction, we're a church of a simulation. We wanna look like the world and thinking we can save the world being like them, but you can't save the world being like them because we can't ever be like them. I wish I had a witness here. Amen. And the world has no interest in a cheap, carbon copy of themselves. You see, uh, being conformed is not about vestments, it's about values. Not about vestments, it's about values. It's not about Accoutrements, it's about assumptions. You see, too many times we think it's evangelism when we imitate culture. Hello, somebody. Oh, y'all go, y'all go make me work. Yeah? So it, 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 we, when, 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 when we dare say we can walk it out and surf and swag. I say I can know the generation I'm talking to now y'all 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 don't get it. When 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 we can when we can we can call ourselves praise dancing but it looks like what you did at the club last night. When our music, I wish I had a witness here. When our music, when our music, amen, sounds like something you just had a drink. No, y'all don't do that. I'm sorry. That, 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 but, but it ought to be something holy about it. Now, listen, I don't mean it ought to be dried and stayed and dull and, and funeral-like, dirge-like. I don't mean that. But there ought to be something different. I wish I had a witness here. There ought to be something holy about it. Be not conformed to this world. Well, the choice of motivation, the choice of 
of presentation, the choice of conformation, but then there's the choice of transformation. It says, and be not conformed to this world, but, I like that conjunction, but. On the other hand, be ye transformed. Transformation is a choice. Y'all ain't hearing me. Ain't no sense you telling the Lord to fix you and you won't be still. Hello. Y'all don't want to help me here. Y'all don't want to. See, transform. Am I talking to anybody here? Amen. Be ye transformed. That, that word is metamorphosis. That we ought to look and, uh, for uh, metamorphosis and not mundanity. We ought to look to be changed and, and not continue like the world. See, a lot of folk, a lot of folk never experience change because they, and, and, and they, don't, they don't know what that means by the renewing of your mind. See, a lot of us, we join church, but we don't join Jesus. And a lot of us, we come thinking we are bringing something instead of coming knowing that we need something. Hello, do I have a witness here? And somebody, not here, but somebody says, well, you know, I've always been like that. This is who I am. Listen, let me tell you something. When you say that, that reveals the bogusness, bogusness of your spiritual birth certificate because the Bible says if any man be in Christ. He is a new, new creature. Behold, all things are passed away and all things are, are become new. You ought to tell somebody, neighbor, I ain't what I used to be. I may not be everything I ought to be, but I got a hallelujah praise. I'm not like I used to be. You see, the metamorphosis versus mundanity is the difference between crawling and flying. Preach, Pastor. Um, you see, metamorphosis is what happens to a caterpillar when it goes into a cocoon. And in the cocoon, a change takes place. And the change takes place in such a way that when it, it, it comes out of the cocoon, it has stuff it didn't have before. <laughs> it, 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 has, it, it has abilities it did not have before. When it went in, as a caterpillar, all it could do was crawl through life. Y'all are hearing me. All it could do was, was crawl through the dust and dirt of life. Preach, Pastor. All it could do was hope that nothing stepped on it. I wish I had a witness here. But when you go through a metamorphosis, you get wings. And you now have an option you didn't have before. Now, instead of crawling, you can fly. Do I have a witness here? I said you can fly. I need some folk who got their wings and they know they can fly. They can fly over the problems of life, fly over the lies, fly over the trials, fly over the tribulations. They can fly. Tell your neighbor, hey, I can And this happens by the renewing of your mind. The renewing of your mind. The renewing of your mind. Our mind is renewed when we feed on and are filled with the Word of God. The most dangerous folk in church of folk who never come to Bible study, who never come to church school, 
preach by yourself, Pastor. Amen. Who, who never study the Word. Y'all ain't talking to me here. They know more about the Constitution, but they can't quote the Word. Hello. Am I talking to any? Y'all ain't talking to me here. Anybody know the Word will change you? I, I need some help. Anybody knows the Word will change you? The Word will show you how to treat those who despitefully use you. The Word will show you how to bless those who curse you. The Word will give you hope when the world says there is none. Anybody knows it's the Word? Well, I've been before you too long. Uh, that the choice is yours. The choice of motivation. We choose what moves us. The choice of presentation. We choose what we present ourselves to. The choice of conformation. We choose what we let shape us. And the choice of transformation. We choose whether we will be changed or not. But when you have made these first four choices, you will experience not only the choice, but the consequence of verification. I believe your Bible says uh, that ye may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. I, I need somebody who can look at your life and your life is a walking verification that God's way is the best way. Do I have anybody who tried it your way but you discovered that God's way is the most beneficial way. Do I have anybody who ain't ashamed to say I used to do it my way, but I found out that when I said nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. I wish I had a witness here. It's not only good, but it's acceptable. And that word means pleasing. I don't mean to bother anybody, but do I have anybody who can say that every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before? Do I have anybody who can say he's good? Mmm, good. He's shown up good. I wish I had a witness here. Do I have anybody who not only verifies that his way is good and acceptable, but perfect? That means that there are no additives needed. That means there is nothing else needed. That everything is in his will. Do I have anybody? who found out that all that you need is in the will of God. I wish I had a few more witnesses. Anybody found out that if you need healing, it's in the word of God. If you need peace of mind, it's in the word of God. If you need lifting, it's in the word of God. If you need hope, it's in the word of God. If you need salvation, it's in the word of God. Do I have a witness here? Let me close right now. I'm talking about Jesus. I said I'm talking about Jesus. If you don't mind, find you a neighbor. 
and you might not take the hand but look at him and say neighbor I need to tell you something some folk would rather have houses and lands some folk choose silver and gold these things they treasure and forget about their souls but I Jesus my choice the road gets rough and the going gets tough and the hills are hard to climb but I started out I need a witness right here I started out a long time ago there is no doubt in my mind ain't it all right ain't it all right ain't it all right <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> but I gotta holler one more time. Yes, he's all right. Give me E flat right quick, and I'm getting out of your way. Oh, 
can only be blessed and have peace and sweet rest as you yield him your body your body and soul oh is your all sing it out church yes he God, if that word doesn't bless, heal, and deliver, nothing will. Lord, we thank you tonight. We thank you for this preacher. We thank you for this message. We thank you, Lord, that we leave here tonight affirming that we have made the right decision and it made all the difference in our lives. You have taken us from where you found us, led us into this marvelous light. But we thank you, Lord, that we had to confess with our mouth and believe in our heart. And that was a choice. We pray, oh God, that you will bless those that wrestle with choices every day. That young man who died at the Western Hotel died because somebody made a bad choice. Wars throughout the world because somebody made a bad choice. The demagogues, the bullies, the dictators, the rulers, the principalities of this world have no power unless we choose in a way that is not pleasing and acceptable in thy sight. We will not be motivated by fear. We will not present ourselves to evil. We will not conform to this world. We want to be transformed. We want to be more like you every day of our lives. Oh Lord, we thank you today. We thank you today. We pray that you will bless what you have accomplished through Christ Jesus our Lord for you chose to go to the cross suffer and die that we may have abundant life in this world and eternal life in the world to come
And we claim the victory in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You may be seated. If you can, if you feel like shouting a little more, you may go out into the narthex. Stay. <laughs> Minister Imani says, stay in here. The deacons are getting ready to uh, set up the table. As we thank the deaconesses for what they have done. I want to call Brother Kelly up as uh, this is Men's Month at Hartford, our annual emphasis where the brothers take the spiritual lead in an effort to endow the church. Our goal every year is to raise $100,000 so we look for 100 brothers to raise $1,000 a piece. There you have it. And amen. And uh, I just thank the Lord tonight that uh, we have been blessed. Can I just hear another hand clap of praise to the Lord for Dr. Johnson and the word he preached tonight. Come on, Brother Gene. Cheek. Have mercy. Good evening, church. I will not be before you long, I promise. Happy Ash Wednesday. Happy Valentine's Day. Y'all forgot, right? Say it again. Happy Men's Month. Let's give another hand clap of praise to uh, Reverend Dr. Nathan Johnson in uh, Tabernacle. They are truly part of our family. Uh, my name is Gene Kelly. I'm the president of Heart for Men United, and this is Men's Month. I did put a call into the Lord to make sure that we had some decent weather. I know it's February, but I, I told him to hold off on the snow till uh, March or April. So, so far, we've been diligent. Amen? So, again, we have a lot of things that are going on during Men's Month because we have abbreviated time. I'm just going to bring your attention to one thing that we have going on since we have so many men and our family here with Tabernacle. Our fourth, fifth annual Men's Health Substance Abuse and uh, Health Workshop. Now, ladies, if your man is not here, there's a man at home, 8.30 in the morning to 3 o'clock on Saturday. We will be, uh, come join us as we explore our health. We will have panelists to talk about prostate cancer. We'll have PSA screenings, haircuts, acupuncture, blood pressure checks. We have substance abuse prevention dialogues as well as we'll serve you breakfast and lunch. Our keynote speaker will be Wayne County Sheriff Raphael Washington. You do not want to miss it. So if brother's been scared to go to the doctor, we're gonna, have, we're gonna bring the doctor to you. So go home and tell brother man to come on and help us out. One other thing that we have to do as well, pastor said that we have to raise some funds. So I basically, I'm issuing a challenge. I'm gonna give pastor his envelopes today so he can get ready to get going and show him his list. And I'm gonna issue a challenge. As pastor sees the list, we've done well. And so I'm issuing the challenge, I'm not, I'm gonna make sure he's got it on tape. The top man, who's, who's the top man on that list, Doc? Eugene Kelly II. That's right. So, I want you, to, I don't wanna be the top man. I want you to beat me. So the top man that beats me, minimum $2,500 raised, right? And again, this is a marathon, not a sprint. So the books do not close on February 29th. They close on December 31st. So if you beat me, as well as, and I'm, I don't think you're gonna do it, but I'm gonna put $500 in your hand at Christmas. Say it again, get it for the tape. I'm gonna put $500 in your hand at Christmas. I dare you to beat me in raising funds for the Lord, all right? So it's been, the challenge has been afoot. That goes for your pastor as well. And like I said, he sees his name, he sees what he's gotta do. Again, it's men's months, we're men by body, by godly works. We show our receipts, amen. Amen, amen, amen. All right, well, prove him now herewith. And see if he won't open up a window and pour you out a blessing. Amen. So uh, thank you, President Kelly. Amen. Let us turn now to this sacred and solemn moment. And this is how we're going to do it after communion. 
Let us stay in the spirit of worship because the preacher put before us some serious business. And we can't leave here like we came. The choice, as one hymn writer said, go by, goes by forever. And we need to make the right decisions. And we need to leave here contemplating every single word that was given to us tonight. So I'd like the ministers to take the ashes and stand at all the exits, the four corners and the center aisle, leaving just a little room for those who would come and briefly greet the preacher. I mean, we're living in a day where somebody walked into a church with the intentions of killing everybody in sight with a child and was killed herself because of forces that she does not understand and movements. We've got to break the cycle. And we must ask ourselves, the things that are happening around us, what are they telling us about us? Instead of like the preacher said, putting ourselves upon some victim's place, we need to stand like Christ, who though on the cross did not condemn, but said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. So in the spirit, we, we ask to get your ashes on your way out and in the fellowship hall, then we will have a space to meet and greet one another. If it be your will to stay, uh, we'll have some uh, food and fellowship downstairs to break the fast for those who fasted from sundown yesterday until this point. And just for those who, who will fast in other ways at other times, amen? Amen, we, we know that will happen. And let us now draw to the Lord's Supper. We ask you, let the pastor uh, renew his strength. One of our ministers join Reverend Kilpatrick and I and let us receive. If there's anything on your mind, save the salvific power of Jesus Christ, release it. If there's any care or concern that you brought Take it to the Lord and leave it there. There's nothing too hard for God. The victory is already won. Let us pray, O oh Lord, in love, thy ear bow down. Hear your people pray, O oh, may the love that knows no bounds be in each heart today. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for another chance. 
thank you, Lord, not only for mercy, but mercies that are renewed day by day. And may we walk humbly in light of that fact that one day we may walk upon the streets of eternity. We ask your blessings upon the juice that represents your blood that was shed for the remission of our sin and that you would bless the bread that represents your body that was broken that we may be made whole. We claim them both. Internalizing the principles which made them possible. In Jesus' name, amen.
take your time. When the hour had come, Jesus sat down with his disciples. He blessed the bread. He broke it, he gave thanks. In that moment, he explained to them the new covenant that was before them. No longer would they be held captive by the motivations and mistakes of the past, but that through his sacrifice on Calvary's mountain, they would claim eternal life. and it calms my fears. commune together as one family in faith. Thank you, Jesus. Let us commune together as one family in faith. Let it sink in. Somebody says it reaches. We go out singing.
You came to dust, you shall return. 